Hello and welcome back to another Inbox Review. <sighs> Inbox Reviews. Today, something completely, completely different. It is uh, the Japanese Type 1 75mm self propelled field gun. No, so self. Yeah, self propelled gun. Sorry. That's what I kept from. So, as you can tell, uh, it's not a bit. Well, yeah, so I can. Not many of these kits are about. They still, I'm not sure if Tamiya make them still, but they are very, very good model kits. Very rare, but still very beautiful. So as you can tell, it's the. It basically, as you can tell, it is the Type 97 chassis that the Japanese had, and then they reinforced it with this 75 self-propelled gun basically attached to it and that was introduced in 1944 so this is a late war Japanese tank it looks very good if I have to say but there we go anyway the so like it's 135th military series the item number is 35095 so there you go and so look at Made in the Philippines, Tamiya.com, if you want to search any research, that lot. And of course, there's some uh, miles on the top here. Tell you which one's which. So, we got the M1340 Italian tank, Amada 3, M3 Stuart, and the Type 97, which is the same chassis, like I said. Uh, it says kits made in 1977, so it's an old kit, and it's a shame. And a bit of a shame it says some items have been discontinued, so sadly on there some items have been discontinued, so it's a bit of a shame. Anyway, let's have a look at what's inside the box. It's naturally standard Tamiya kit, you still have the instructions and a bag full of plastic sprue. There we are. All that. Uh kit comes with rubber tracks this time. And also comes with Japanese instructions as well, naturally, because I'm British. I can't read, I'm afraid I haven't learned Japanese, whereas some people have. Anyway, that's that. Have a look at instructions. So you have some detailed history in the, the kit. As I said, item number is 35095. And it tells you information about the tanks. Most successful and widely used Japanese tanks of World War II was the Type 97 medium tank, the Chiha. Designed in 1936 and accepted in 1937, replacement for the medium Type 89. Uh, blah blah blah, it goes down. The new Japanese design intended to match the A6 and 5 pound performance, had a speed of foot, 35 km per hour, weighs about 15 tons. Um, just going down, I'm just skimming through this. Uh, says here, uh, let's have a look, to update the medium tanks, some self propelled gun models were produced in small numbers based on the basic of the Type 97 Chiha chassis known as gun tanks, gun type type 1, the home knee had a single open top compartment with a Type 90 75mm gun rather than the Chiha's turret. This was a medium vo velocity field gun adapted at for armoured fighting vehicle use with the performance combats that an American Sherman's tank 75mm gun. The crew of 5 was protected by the 50mm armoured front shield. A 170 horsepower V12 diesel engines make that the 12.9 ton tank was capable of a top speed of 38 km an hour. Despite the poor crew protection, the converge of the inexpensive and simple gave the Japanese army a fighting armoured fighting vehicle that was Theoretically capable of com com no, sorry, combating the Sherman tank. These tanks saw action in the Philippines in 1944. There we go, quick information there, the history lesson done. So we're going straight on to the build, straight in. So we build a chassis, it's kind of a difficult word, chassis. So we got the bogies going in there with some nice spring, I'll tell you the truth, guys. And then you got the Runner and a drive shaft points here, all there. And on the chassis, guys, there's some nice detail going on with some 
hox cables here, dog on the back here, even an open bin. That's very nice. Have the bin open, and you can even have a bit of interior work going on. The seats and two look like radio compartment boxes. I do not know what they are, but anyway, that's going there. And plus some lights, cable ties, and the baby is going in. Very simple, but pretty detailed tank. Next part going is the hull, going on, well, the top half of the hull. You even have some metalized um, engine parts on there at least. And that's the back of the interior going in. Then we have the main hull, driver's compartment, you even have the the door, the hatch open or closed position, and even you can have the uh, is that right? I don't know about that, but you can have, I think, the engine compartment complacement open or closed as well. And even some other compartments as well. Although there's no interior detail, that is very nice touch. Thank you very much, Tammy, for putting that in. Next is the gun going in with the breech as well, going on there onto the firepower. As you can see, it gives you a bird's eye view of what it's supposed to look like inside. Hmm. Okay, and then oh, one more thing I forgot is how the tracks go on. There you go. Then we have the, the compartment shaft going in, all the uh, what are they called again? Adjustments, whatever they are, just make make the cannon go up and down. I'm terrible at this. This this proves how much of a modeler I am for armored fighting vehicles. So the can go in there onto its holster, say. Got then you got the mufflers going on to the back there, along with some cables and tow ropes that lot. Including two figures as well with cannons, shells as well. And then last but not least, the assembly of the the armour plating on the front going in. And last but not least, the last little details. And that is seriously it. So for instruction manuals, well instruction manuals, the decals, we have four variants we can make. Same camouflage pattern, so you're not going to miss much. That's it. So the first vehicle is the field of our, oh sorry, vehicle of field artillery school. Okay, so that's 370. Uh, the one that I'll be doing was the vehicle of 2nd Company, 2nd Artillery Regiment, 2nd Tank Division. Um, 231. Other one is the fourth platoon, the fourteenth tank regiment, number three o eight, and the last one is vehicle, the fourth technical laboratory. Laboratory. Well, sorry, that's two two one. So that is really it, guys. Um, it says a type, Honey Type One self propelled tanks were introduced late stage of World War Two. They usually the unique free tone cloud camouflage over top crew compartment was painted in khaki earth color. Which is believed to be also the base of the whole colour. Cloud camouflage of dark green and red brows plied over in patterns matched local battlefield environments. Camouflage pattern usually extends the wheels as well as some vehicles may have painted overall khaki. So that is really it, guys. So you have khaki, red brown, and green. Dark green on that. That is your camouflage pattern done. Done and dusted. Very standard for Tamiya. Got the tracks. These are the rubber ones. I don't know if everyone prefers the other ones, whatever. I do prefer the other ones, but I have to admit, guys, these tracks, you give a nice wash on them, they will look absolutely beautiful. Include some metal effects as well. Very bendy, very strong. And you get four pins that go in there and lock them into position. And that is it, really. So the rubber tracks, standard, you may want to upgrade them if you choose to, if you're a better modeler than me, but there we are. Right, hull, hull, oh, and drop them as well. Have the hull, the hull, hull, hull. There we go, two pieces, made one in the stapled bags. I don't know why people are a fan of these or not, but hey-ho, or as they say, pony. So take them off like so, 
Okay, I'm just ripping off all I can do. Mm, oh well. So that's the hole. This is this is so this is the first time I'm taking out the bag. Everything else is sealed. So it's Tamiya Type 97 chassis, 1975. Oh, what's that? 1975 Tamiya, copyrighted 1987. Hmm, that's confusing. Which dates you make up, Tamiya? Okay, hull. It's nice, thick. Nice thick plastic, um, got some nice detail going on with the, um, the rivets there. No one underneath interior detail, but the rest, hmm, very nice. So that's that. Next is the top hole. Now this is a beauty. Detail, it, this kit does offer some tiny, tiny little details that just bring so eye-catching to the modeler. I'm model as eyes, whichever. So again, pull this out. So do remember, this is the same chassis as the Type 97 that you see in the other kit. Okay, it's so the Type 1 SP Gun 1977, again copyright 1987. Okay. So this is the front hull part. We've got the two the drivers and what should have been the gunner's position on the front here. That's all stowed in there. And behind here is where the engine compartment sits. As you can see, Nice detail, some nice hatch coverings going on, and even have the positions open and closed, like so. Very nice, no underneath interior detail, just on the top. Wow, little, little tank here. So, we have in total, let's have a look. So, this is the, so I'm going with the standard chassis parts, these are, on here. So this, so this is what you'll find in the Type 97 tank as well, the other one that I just showed. So we've got some rubber like parts for the wheels, the runner wheels, whichever, and the bogies, that lot. We have another set there, it's just stuck between that lot. Whilst this on the floor, so you can see, there's all the wheels and sprockets. Wow. Very nice touch to detail, guys. Very nice touch crisps. There's no flash, as I can see. Wow. Very, very nice. Wow. Look at that. Uh, I don't know if you can see, see the detail down here. But the, all the rivets and the, the wheels and that lot, and then the rubber parts on the edge, and including the runner wheels at the back. Very beautiful, guys. Very, very beautiful. And then the other sprue parts, um, it's got here. So this is what I was talking about. This is the um, the detailed part that sits um, in here. So that sits underneath in there. So you can paint that black and then chrome it with silver, dry brush over top. And then this hatch will sit on the top like so. And let me just check, can you have that? Yes, you can have that in open or closed position. Wow, very nice detail. So, as it's the standard Type 97, we get the little extra details in this that we don't need to use for the, the Type 1. For some reason, we have the machine guns that fit onto the turrets, even on the, the forward and the rear turrets. And then we have some extra machine guns. I think this is the Type 99, I think it is. The um, gun-mounted machine guns, the Japanese widely used. We even have some spare helmets that can be fitted onto the side. That is actually a nice detail. Or even the crew figures themselves. I just have to check that in a minute. Same again, the mufflers. The grill plating. So perfect. So beautiful. So that on there. And last but not least, this is the parts for the, uh, the actual Type 1 itself. So, as you can tell, the bags are different. So, this is just an add-on extra as well as the packaging and the box and oh actually did I forget them? Did I actually forget them? Oh there they are. Oh they're in this kit. No, I just wonder where the decals were. Okay. Open this one up. If it will open. Open this one. Just check pull that all out. The decals are there. Just so a quick look at the decals. Very glossy, very nice registered no problem whatsoever. Wow. Very, very nice guys. Oh, don't lose them. 
Right, last sprue is the main, I just knocked the table, the main turret. Uh, we naturally we have the holes that go on here, the main cannons, breech, adjustment handles going on down here, driver's seat. Don't even know what that is. Sorry, I just was it's probably um somewhere in the back room, so I just ignore it. Anyway, that's going on there. We have the crew figures going there. They're not let's have a look at them. Let's have a quick look at them. I suppose, because they're old they're pretty old figures, but I guess if you take care and great detail to these figures, they will come out so perfect, so nice, they can't complain. And like I said, two shells going on there with the cannons. Uh, you got one type and the other type there, so it might it would make be nice to make some spare shells for the back. And then the top turrets here where you have the the actual armor plate and where the cannon sticks out. You get the options for the hatches to be open or closed on the sides as well as the front here. So that's pretty nice. It's a pretty nice kit. Detail is absolutely brilliant. Oh, actually, hold on. Hold on a second. Oh, going back to what I said earlier about those spare shells, we have proof of some. Wow. I've never seen them before. Hmm. So we have some spare shells, I think. Like, well, shell casings, I should say. And paint them brass. Put them on the back. That looks very, very good. Wow. And even the interior detail is nice as well. Just down here where the hatches are, where the shell casings go. Tamia, you have satisfied me again. This is going to be a nice quick build, I'm going to tell you the truth, guys. So there we are. That is the inbox review of the Japanese Type 1. Would I say it's a bad kit? No. I say. If it's a standard kit you want for a Japanese armoured tank, I'd say, yeah, go for it, guys. Because if you have one or see one, I would buy it. Because the kit already has perfect detail. But I guess if you don't like those rubber tracks and you want it to push that edge a bit further, or even some extra figures or crew commanders, no problem. But I think I'm going to spill this straight out of the kit, guys. Perfect. No problem whatsoever. And tell you what, I'm going to love it so much, I'm going to start it pretty much right away after this recording because I can't wait. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you like, give us a thumbs up and even subscribe if you feel like it. Thank you very much for watching, happy modelling, take care and I shall see you all later. So from Mod Art 633 cheers and goodbye for now.